Welcome to the UBC Okanagan MyTax 2022 Summer Pre-Arrival Orientation and Getting Ready for Life at UBC Okanagan. My name is Sebastian Kolasar, and I work as the Global Engagement Coordinator at UBC's Global Engagement Office. On this page, you will find all of my colleagues who also work at the office, notably Dana Lowton, who is the Assistant Director of Go Global. And you can see that we oversee international student advising, safety and support. We facilitate student mobility, mobility partnerships, international research, and we foster an intercultural learning environment through both departmental and faculty-led programming for all UBC students. We also offer immigration advising, settlement advising, transitional advising, and any other form of support that may be relevant to your time while you're here at UBC Okanagan. Through this presentation, you'll be looking at the following themes. Feel free to stop the presentation at this time and to review these if you wish, but we'll be beginning with life in Kelowna. Life in Kelowna. You'll see that Kelowna is located in the Okanagan Valley. Kelowna is located within the ancestral and unceded territories of the Silix Okanagan peoples. We hope that you'll be able to engage with the history of this land, as well as the significance of this land to so many of the different uh, nations, as well as indigenous peoples that call this land home and historically have for thousands of years. Kelowna is named after the interior Salish word for grizzly bear. The city is home to approximately 200,000 people during peak season and encompasses 214 kilometers of land bordering the Okanagan Lake. As you can see in the picture here, there's a legend that a lake monster who is fondly called Ogopogo inhabits Okanagan Lake. You'll see a statue of this monster at the end of Bernard on the main street of downtown Cologne. The Okanagan is known for its beaches, vineyards, ski hills, hot summers, and cold winters. Our climate, as you can see, we have hot, dry summers, which you will be experiencing while you are conducting your research here. While you are going out in the Kelowna area, you'll notice that we have a provincial sales tax at 7%, a goods and services tax at 5%, for a total tax burden of 12% every time you are accessing a good or a service here in the Okanagan Valley. So you can get used to that, as well as tipping between 15 and 20% on the bill before tax. This may be a little bit different to what you're used to if you're from a European country, where you often will have a gratuity already added to your bill. Before you come over to the Okanagan campus, you need to make sure that you have your passport, a letter of introduction, if you have a study permit that you are going to be obtaining, a temporary resident visa, Letter of acceptance is also a very important piece of information to hold. Be prepared to show these to Canadian immigration officials at the airport and don't pack them in your checked luggage. You must make photocopies for yourself and family and friends back home just in case you do lose one of these very important documents. Another important consideration to have is if you're bringing cash. The Canada Border Services Agency will tax you if you bring more than $10,000 in cash. And for safety reasons, we do recommend that you do not bring large amounts of cash. You can open a bank account, which will be covered shortly in the presentation. And you can make photocopies of all your financial documents should you need to make a transfer when you do arrive in Canada from back home. It's important to note that Canada is a society that does not really operate um, with a cash economy, that most services that you are going to access are going to be uh, a service that you can pay for with either a visa debit or with a credit card. But we'll be covering that a little bit more later in the presentation. Other things you'll need to bring would be a bathing suit, sunglasses, comfortable clothing and shoes, travel power adapters, which fit the North American standard, medication, as well as supplementary documentation for your medication if you are going to be bringing that with you in your travels, just to make sure that you're going through the airport smoothly a document portfolio for all of your important documents that were mentioned before, an unlocked phone so that you can put a SIM card in once you arrive, and to leave space in your suitcase for everything that you'll be bringing back. Once you arrive in Kelowna, you'll be getting to the university from the Kelowna airport. The taxi is certainly the most expensive but most convenient option, whereas public transit will be able to serve you before 6.30 p.m. on Route 23 for $2.50 per ride. You can see this information on the BC Transit website, as well as the airport website. 
A digital copy of this presentation will also be provided to you so that you can access the links that are embedded within. Once you arrive to the Okanagan campus, you'll probably be wanting to look into on-campus housing. What do you need to buy before you're comfortable and settled here? What amenities are available? Bicycle access, should you choose to ride a bicycle while you're here at UBC Okanagan? COVID-19 protocols, as well as key pickup. Most students are currently assigned to a single connected unit on a meal plan. You will have access to common lounges, which are not fully equipped in the summer. So you'll need to purchase plates, cutlery, pots, dish soap, as well as any other item that you might need while you're here at, uh, on campus. Students that are in the Cascades residences, which should show up on your residence letter or offer, will not be in a meal plan and will need to purchase the items above to cook their own meals. Kettles and coffee makers are permitted in rooms and all other appliances are only permitted in lounges. Laundry rooms are located on the second, third and fourth floor of Kalamoka, as well as the Cascade C buildings. You can also get this information from the Nichaco housing desk as well. You can purchase laundry cards at the Nichaco Commons block with $5 in cash, and the balance can also be topped up by credit or debit. We recommend purchasing detergent off campus as vending machines are not always stocked. And if you'd like to use a bike, you may register for this upon arrival with key access. When speaking about the COVID-19 protocols, testing kits and masks are available at the front desk for residents should they need it. Student housing has self-isolation units available for residents should they need to self-isolate for the recommended five-day period. And we ask that students call the office if they need to set this up. If they're on a meal plan, food will be delivered directly to them. Lastly, keys are available for pickup from your second floor on the Nichaco residence building, pictured in the bottom right of this image. If you have additional questions about on-campus housing, you can reach out to the email address listed on the slide. Next, we'll be looking at campus. If you have the opportunity to review the virtual interactive campus map, it's a really good way to get oriented to campus before your arrival at UBC Okanagan. And as you can see on this beautiful picture here, this is an aerial photo of our Cascades residences, the Arts and Science Center, as well as all of our other student residences and our building, which is in the bottom right-hand corner towards the University Center. One other important thing you'll need to figure out once you do arrive on campus is your student card. You can apply for this and we do recommend you apply before you travel to campus and you have to provide a picture of yourself. Now this UBC student card is your main form of identification for all on-campus activities. It can be used off campus as a means of proving your student status and you can get discounts on gym memberships and many other services just by showing this card. Carry this with you and keep it safe as much as possible. This card will also be helpful for you when you visit the UBC Okanagan Library. Our library provides a large online collection of books, articles, and journals, and our librarians can offer you support for both your research activities and studying activities. Your student card is your library card, so make sure that you bring that with you when you want to sign out any books. There are many computer workstations in the UBCO Library, and the UBCO Library also has a laptop lending program. If you need any specific software programs, you can also ask librarians at the front desk about that as well. And there are pay for print services available in the library as well, in case you need to print or scan anything while you're on campus. Now going forward, you'll also need to set up a student email address and you can visit the information technology website, which is listed on the slide. And we also do recommend that you connect to UBC's secure server as soon as possible on campus to ensure that you have data privacy uh, as well as a secure internet connection while you're going through your research activities or simply getting set up at the Okanagan campus. Another important consideration would be food options. You can review the food options that are available on campus at either the Kama Cafe, the Pritchard Dining Hall, Starbucks Sunshine, or the Tim Hortons Library. But as you may see, some of these amenities are not open over the summer. So you can connect with any of us at the Global Engagement Office, or me specifically, as I have so many food resources for you off campus that you'll be able to explore during your time here in Kelowna. To cover the banking logistics, you'll need to look into setting up a bank account. If my tax does stipulate that you'll be receiving funds through a Canadian bank account, you'll need essentially to set up a social insurance number if you are receiving a stipend or grant from my tax, as this is considered taxable income in Canada. 
Now, there are a few things that we must cover about that as well, is that if you are intending to open a bank account in Canada, you will usually have to present two forms of ID, so a passport and as well as maybe your temporary resident visa. Uh, but if you do have an electronic uh, travel authorization, you will unfortunately not be able to use that as a piece of ID. Um, so this is something that you might want to discuss with our team before arriving. Um, and if you are coming on a study permit, that is certainly the recommended way as you will be able to use that as a form of ID when setting up that bank account. Now, we also have an ATM on campus that you'll be able to use to withdraw funds uh, from your bank account back home, but you have to make sure that that is internationally recognized. And you can reach out to us um, and we'll be providing our contact information at the end of the presentation to give you a better understanding of the situation for banking in Canada. We'll be so happy to help you with that. We also have a bit of a guide here on how to open a bank account, and you can review that whenever you have the time. With your phone plan, we do want to make sure your phone is unlocked so you can get a SIM card. For phone plans, we have major, mid-sized, and smaller carriers, but the best way to look into this is by going to Rate Hub and finding which plan best suits your needs. You can expect to pay between $40 and $60 a month if you're using a SIM card and an unlocked phone, but going forward, doctors and counselors are available by online booking and off-campus emergencies can be handled through three of the following, um, three of the following methods here. So the 24 hour crisis line is important uh, to take note of as well for you or anyone you, you might meet while you're on the Okanagan campus. Emergency services, the number is 911. And a, just an important reminder, it is an offense to call 911 for any improper reason. Now, a proper reason to call 911 would be say a life-threatening injury or a life-threatening illness or something that you would deem very severe. Whereas the 24-hour nurses helpline through 811 would be a wonderful resource for you if you are, for instance, feeling sick and are not wanting to leave your place of residence. If you're unsure of how to access health insurance or health services while you're here in UBC Okanagan, you can always come and talk to us and we'll be happy to assist you. Now for staying healthy at the Okanagan campus, we have our Hangar Fitness Center, which offers a gymnasium, which is state-of-the-art fitness equipment and group fitness classes, which will take place over the summer. We also have a number of other gyms that are located off campus, but this will be the most convenient opportunity for you to get exercise while you are studying here um, in the Okanagan. Another opportunity for you would be to bike around Kelowna to be able to get some exercise. We have a large network of bike lanes and bike paths throughout the city and it is mandated by law that you wear a helmet and we recommend getting a high quality bike lock to keep that loaned bicycle or the bicycle that you have purchased safe during your time here. We also have a UBC Cycles office on campus which will assist you with bicycle loans, workshops, tools, storage and bike repairs should you need that service. Now getting around Kelowna. Maps, schedules, and everything you need to know about the Kelowna Regional Transit System can be found within the link. But the summer bus pass options that are available to you are as follows. You have cash fare, so $2.50 a trip, which will be convenient, say, if you just want to go downtown and you aren't so worried about coming back right away. Whereas a day pass would be good if you want to go to multiple different locations in Kelowna within one day um, and that you won't be able to necessarily get a transit pass that will be valid for long enough. Whereas if you're going to be using the bus all the time, if you're maybe living off campus, you will need to purchase a U-Pass, but you will only be able to do that until July 15th. If you're arriving after that, your best options will be the cash fare or the day pass. If you want more information about accessing the transit system in Kelowna, you can visit the Student Union of UBC Okanagan at UNC 103 for more information, and they'll be happy to guide you through that process. Now, additionally, safety on campus. So we have a 24-hour safe walk service, which is available anywhere on campus. We have an incident reporting line for non-emergencies. And for emergencies, you can call the number um, that is listed in the third bullet point here. And this is an incredible way for you to be able to get connected with someone should you be feeling unsafe or insecure while you were on campus. Now our security uh, department is available to assist you at all hours, as you can see. So we have a 24 hour service. We wanna make sure that you are safe and feeling safe while you're here conducting research at the Okanagan campus. 
And lastly, if you have any questions about your health coverage, this is something that you can reach out to my tax about as they will be providing your health insurance directly. But if you have any other questions about work permits, any future goals or aspirations to stay in Canada, to come back to Canada, to study or to work, our immigration advisors will be happy to discuss this with you. Um, you can also reach out to us directly and we'll be able to facilitate an appointment booking process uh, so you can get that conversation. And how would you go about doing that? Well, you can email the geo.ubco at ubc.ca email address to be connected with myself or any one of my wonderful colleagues here. Uh, our website is available at the bottom of the slide here, as well as our room number, which is located at the University Centre building once again. All of us at the Global Engagement Office are looking forward to welcoming you to campus. And if you have any other additional questions, feel free to contact us at the email address that was provided in the earlier slide. Thank you so much.